Well, here it is, the interior fit out of our Land Cruiser 76 is almost done. It's this close. We're just waiting on a last few couple of key components uh, and we will have it done. Can't wait to show you this. There's a lot involved in this, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning. The brief for this 76 was to serve a number of roles. We needed it to be a great everyday driver, doing basic activities that we all do, like going down to the grocery store, running into town, all those sorts of things. We needed it to be able to be a great tow vehicle and store all the stuff in here that we need to store as part of our travel full time around Australia. We also needed it to be an awesome day tripper to take us to some of these highlights around the country that we get to go to without the caravan on. Go and explore for the day, maybe prepare a meal and stay a little bit late, uh, enjoy the sunset, that sort of thing. And we also wanted to be able to stay for multiple nights in the car or based out of the car uh, away from the caravan as well to go and explore some of those more remote areas. And so it needed to be able to support the four of us, us and the two boys uh, to be able to do that. So let's dive in and take a look at everything that we've fitted to the car so far, all the different products, the draw system that I built uh, and, and why we picked all the stuff we did. And then we'll loop back here at the end and I'll take you for a run through what we've done so far and how it's all gonna function. Can't wait to show you this, it's gonna be awesome. Rightio, today's task is to install some of the Molly gear from the guys at Legendex. So if you remember right back to when we very first started the build on our 76, one of the first things I picked up for the car to drop off to McCormack's was our Legendex uh, side steps or sliders that we installed on the cruiser. And when I was there, I picked up uh, a heap of gear as well for the inside of the 76. So they make this range of Molly gear called Rogue Molly, uh, and they do a heap of gear for a whole range of vehicles, but including the 76. This was a big part of actually the overall look of the concept we had for the car, was the Molly sort of look. It's that rugged sort of military look. It's also extremely lightweight. It's made from alloy. It's only three mil alloy, so it's really lightweight. So it doesn't add too much weight to the car. Yeah, it's just a really flexible, uh, system to be able to really uh, customize it to exactly what we want and where we want to store things and as we sort of go through and use the vehicle we might change our ideas about where to store things so this allows just a fully flexible system to be able to re rejig things and reconfigure things depending on needs and also depending on what uh, trip we're doing at the time so yeah pretty keen to get it all installed and see what it all looks like the roof shelf is gonna add a heap more uh, storage space in the rear because it allows us to use this, what is otherwise really dead space up in the top of the roof here. Uh, that's because the roof's a lot higher than the actual opening of the door. Well, that was pretty straightforward and easy. That took us about 10 minutes, I reckon, to, to get that in. The hardest part was finding the second hole for the bracket. You gotta poke a hole through the roof lining and find a captive nut that's installed in the car already behind the, the roof lining, but you use the bracket to find that and it wasn't too bad. I had a few misses, but eventually got it. Just use a little, I just use a little probe, like a tiny little probe, just to probe around and find it. And yeah, job done. It's really solid, pretty stoked with that. Use that space up there that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to use. And it's got a big upturn. So it's got a small upturn on this side so you can get gear in and out easily, obviously, but on the other side, it's quite a big upturn so that you're not uh, losing your gear that you put in there, falling forward. And it's also giving us a bit of a mounting location to be able to store some small light gear above the kids' heads on that molly panel if we wanted to. Next job's gonna be to try and put this table on the barn door. Uh, I just opened the packet and it does have riv nuts. So we're gonna have a crack at trying to make the riv nuts work without a riv nut tool, because I don't have a riv nut tool. Uh, and see if we can make it work. Otherwise it might have to wait until tomorrow. Today being Sunday, I've got no chance of getting a riv nut tool today but if not, we'll move on to the next one. So let's give this table a crack. The old drop down table is a pretty common mod on 76s and 78 troopies, just to give us somewhere to prep food and to, to cook and stuff like that, as well as just somewhere when you're unpacking groceries and packing things in and out of the fridge and things like that. Well, we're having limited success without a rib nut tool because although we can get to a few of them behind the inside the door with a pair of multi-grips to hold onto them while we try and screw them up, um, yeah, we can't get to all of them because of the stuff, there's bracing and stuff inside the door. So we're gonna try one more thing. We got another, a, another type of puller that might be able to squeeze them. But if not, we might just move on and uh, install these window uh, molly panels that go in the rear windows here. Well, we eventually got the table fitted up yesterday afternoon. Definitely made life difficult not having a riv nut tool or a nut cert tool, whatever you want to call it. But we got there in the end. I wouldn't recommend doing it the way we did it, but we ended up using a bolt and we're able to get the, the riv nuts to squash using the bolt and got, got the table fitted up. So it's a Molly style table, obviously to match the rest of everything else we're doing. Uh, we do have some strings still to put on this to hold it flat. And we're gonna do a, a 
uh, chopping board sort of insert in there, either probably a timber one uh, to go in there. But yeah, pretty happy with how that's gone on overall. Today's task, oh, they get the sh we got the shelf done yesterday and this is the idea of the shelf for us is, is how well all this stuff goes up in there. So we've got a couple of blankets, a couple of hammocks, uh, we've got our shopping bags, which are just one of those things that's just always in the way and annoying is the, the shopping bags and something you want to have in the car all the time. Uh, we've got all our wet weather jackets, like so warm jackets uh, and a picnic rug as well. So just uses it up that stead space, like I said, and a heap of just light bulky gear that we want to just have in the car all the time, but don't necessarily need access to regularly, but yeah, really convenient up there. I might even look at putting something in here. Um, to have like a, uh, we're gonna take a portable solar panel with us, it might end up going up there or then it might fit into the drawer system. I haven't quite worked that out yet. But yeah, pretty stoked with how that's come up. And it, and I put the, this is quite adjustable where you put the shelf as far as forward and back. I put it as far forward as it can go. Uh, and that gives us clearance then for the kids um, car seat tether strap as well. So yeah, overall pretty happy with that. Today's job is, or this morning's little job is gonna be to put these these molly panels in the windows. So these are made for the 76. It doesn't go that way though, it goes the other way. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are made for the 76. So we're gonna put that one there and then we've got one for the other side as well. What I love about these ones in particular is, um, well, they're obviously keep in keeping with the rest of the look of the vehicle that we're doing, but, um, and being lightweight alloy, they're really light. But these ones are um, the only ones I could find that were, didn't require any drilling into the doors uh, to make them fit. So these are use a pretty clever little clamp system that clamps inside the window rubber uh, and yeah, clamps it onto the door frame. So pretty happy with that little system. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on and yeah, then we're pretty much then just waiting for the ply to turn up so we can start building this drawer system. On the rear windows, we'll be able to store all that stuff that you want to get access to every day. So. First aid kit, sunscreen, maybe a torch, some things like that that we can mount on these windows. And again, just using up otherwise dead space, but also keeping things really easy to access. Well, that's that, that's easy as that. So yeah, these are these, so I'll show, I'll show you on this side. These are the really little, clever little clips that they use to fit the panels to the window. Now in behind this, in behind this seal here, there's actually a bit of a rebate and this goes inside there and actually clamps around the back of the door frame and then, and then that, you place them around and then that's what it all bolts up to. So you can remove them again. They only just tuck in behind. So yeah, they're not permanent and there's no drilling. So once you took, if you took them out, you wouldn't even know they were there. But like Liz was just saying, the obviously the primary function is having more storage. But the other benefit is it actually gives us a bit of extra extra security in the back because we're gonna have these here and in the window boxes, we're gonna have the gull wings. So they're gonna be built in. You won't really be able to see in or access our gear in the back. Uh, obviously if you smash a front window or something, you can still get in, but it doesn't hurt to just have things a little bit out of, out of sight. So yeah, and it, I think it just finishes off the car pretty nicely too. I do wanna now try and replace this door panel though with a black alley just so it sort of matches all the way through and our drawer system is going to be black so yeah just keeping that black theme you know it's the details that matter got the draw uh sorry the yeah the driver's side the big one fitted up as well um it's really strong and just gives us a really flexible uh storage solution and really loving the look of it when you step back and all the molly starting to, the sort of the look of it starting to come together which is looks are important too it's got to look good and function well so I think I'll probably change the bolts over to black bolts. I'm pretty particular like that. I find the, the alloy or the stainless bolts just don't quite do it for me. Uh, spent a lot of money and time trying to get rid of all the chrome on the rest of the car. So I'll probably change a lot of these bolts out to black ones. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, all, all went pretty well. So yeah, all right, that's uh, job done. I think the last thing I'm gonna fit up today and then we're gonna get going. The kids are getting a bit ratty, so. Uh, where are, is these I picked up. Uh, if you remember when we did the UHF and the uh, Toe Pro, I used one of the brackets from a little company called 76 Fab. Uh, they also do these ones, which go along the side of the front and uh, the front driver and passenger seats. Uh, they're a fire extinguisher mount. So I'll use one of them as a fire extinguisher mount. We don't need two fire extinguishers, but I'll run one on Liz's side with a fire extinguisher. And then I'm gonna put one on my side too. I'm not 100% sure what I'll use it for yet. 
I'm thinking maybe a little handsaw or something like that for pruning up trees when we go down tight tracks because uh, I used to carry one of them under my seat in the old car. Uh, so that'd be a pretty cool mounting spot for that. Uh, but we'll see how we go. We might even use it for like handheld UHF or PLB, things like that. So we'll see how we go with that. So I'll get them fitted up and then uh, we better get these kids out to go do something more fun than watch dad bolt things up to a car. <laughs> So the bracket just uses the seat mounts to bolt up. So I've taken the 14 mil bolt out of the front mount here and then in through the back, there's just a, I don't know if you can see it in there with the light, but there's just a bolt goes through that's come supplied with it, goes through this little hole, just a little Allen key bolt. There is a plastic cover that goes on the back of that seat mount that you've got to unclip. Now I should have done this when we had the car pulled apart for the sound insulation, but I did forget all about it. So anyway, Nice and solid, that worked out well. Another job done, ticked off. That's gonna do it for today. We've got some running around to do. Next, I'll be tackling the draw system. Just gotta wait for this material to turn up and we're into it. We're also still waiting on that roof console as well. So if that shows up, that could be next, who knows? <laughs> we'll see what happens. We came up with the design concept for this draw system quite a while ago. We've had almost two years waiting for this car to turn up, so we've had a bit of time to think about the ideal setup and how we would like to set out the rear end to suit our needs and what we want the vehicle to do. Number one is we wanted to create a flexible space, somewhere that we can change the setup depending on what sort of trip we're doing or what we're using the vehicle for at the time. Despite having all that time to think and plan and we've had some measurements, we've flagged down a few 76 owners as we've seen them driving around the country and tried to grab measurements off their cars to be able to design the perfect system for us. You just can't quite get your head around everything that there is when you're working in a 3D space, particularly when it's not square and straight uh, and you've got you know, the rear doors lean in, the seat leaning back, things like that. So what we've gone and done is done a cardboard template. Now, as you can probably see behind me, it's not the best template at the moment. It didn't survive the drive around here to my mate's place uh, where I'm gonna be building the draw system, but I do highly recommend doing a cardboard template in the back of your car. It does, it is a really quick and cheap and easy way to figure out what's gonna work well and what's not and really start to visualize what your system's gonna look like and your storage system is gonna look like in the back of your vehicle. So we've gone ahead and done that. From that, we've figured out a few things that are gonna work well, things that aren't gonna work well, and from that, we're gonna use those cardboard cutouts to then start setting out the timber that we're gonna be using to build it out of. We're gonna be using a product called Hexapply, uh, which is a plywood that has a, a black film, basically, on either side. On one side, it's a smooth film, and on the other side, it's this hexagon-shaped textured film that's a really uh, durable surface. It's chemical resistant, it's water resistant, uh, and it's really, really durable. It's actually designed for the floors and walls of delivery vans and things like that. So it's a really cool product. Uh, it's starting to become popular in troopy fit outs and van life fit outs and things like that. We think it's just something a bit different and a really unique look. We didn't want to go carpet. Carpet's not really practical when you're traveling in the dust and the sand and everything like that. And we just wanted something that looked a little bit different and was a little bit unique, but also was still really, really durable. So we think that the hex supply is gonna meet all of those needs, uh, but time will tell. But it's uh, something that we're really excited about experimenting a little bit with. Luckily, we've got a table saw here. Um, one of the tools that I've got stored here in my mate's shed while we travel Australia full time is my table saw. So we've got the table saw here uh, and a few other power tools that are gonna make life a little bit easier. But you could do this with a circular saw and a straight edge or a track saw if you have one or something like that as well. We've also decided to incorporate some more of the molly panel into the design, uh, partly just to fit in with everything else we've done, but partly also to make the space more flexible, but also keep it as lightweight as possible. Now this power system we actually developed with Enerdrive to fit the 76 exactly. It's quite narrow between the wheel arches of a 76 and it's, it was designed specifically to fit between the wheel arches of wagons. The board itself is made from some sort of high density plastic and we use that to form the backboard of our draw system to keep everything square and tight. It saved having to double up and use ply for the back of our drawers and it worked really, really well. I feel like I spent most of my time pre-drilling and screwing things together and then I had to pull it all apart when it was time to glue it up again. 
We use the router to route out rebates in the lid and in the base for the upright sections of the draw system, just to give a little bit more stability and security and to keep everything nice and straight and square. It worked really, really well. Oh, well there you go. It's together, that's a good start. <laughs> it's took a bit of time there to get it all squared up and, uh, and all sitting good. I've just sat the, uh, the battery on top because that's where that center uh, divider is, where we've rebated that for that to sit home. It just wasn't quite sitting and the top's got a slight bow in it. So just a bit of weight on top to hold that down just so I could get an idea of how everything was gonna fit. It all fits bloody perfect. So I'm pretty happy with that. Not bad for a bloke who doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> that's the basic box built, which um, yeah, it still needs to be glued up and everything. I've just done a dry fit so I can get it in the car and check how it all fits out. I'll do that a bit later on, but yeah, when we pull it apart, we'll glue it all up properly and then get it together. And the box now being done is the foundation for everything that's to come next, which is got to make the fridge fit. We need to cut a hole in the side for the compressor to go through, get the battery mounted up at the back end, and then obviously start building the drawer as well. So still a lot to go, but that's a big chunk of progress and it's good to finally see it all coming together. Well, there we go. It's in the car. <laughs> it fits. It's always a good start. There's going to be two drawers. Uh, one. One on the driver's side in the big cavity and then there'll be a much smaller one, a little shallow one that sits on top of the fridge. We had to make the box this high to clear the, uh, well for one, for the electrical panel at the back, but also to clear the battery uh, and the terminals and everything to make sure there's room for that, which means there's going to be a bit of dead space above the fridge that I'll use just to make a small drawer as well. So yeah, still plenty to go, but um, starting to all come together and it's, it's nice to finally, uh, what you've been visualising for so long to finally come together. So. I'm going to kick into it and get this, uh, get it, pull it back out of the car and um, start making the fridge fit. Now the fridge was a big decision in the back end of the 76. We never had a fridge in our Ranger previously and while I would say you don't need one, for us to be able to do the extra things we wanted to do, like those longer day trips and overnighters away from the caravan, a fridge was becoming more and more important. Now upright fridges are becoming really popular even in wagons and obviously the old trusty chest fridge as well. The problem with both of those for us was just the amount of space that it took up in the back of the car all of the time. And we didn't really feel like we needed a large capacity fridge. The small 30 litre fridge was plenty for us we think and having it in the drawer and being able to incorporate it into the drawer system just made such a better use of space for us. Rightio, to bolt the battery in, uh, the battery actually comes with a a battery tray as part of it. So the tray comes like that and then there's just a strap that goes around and holds the battery down. So I'm gonna be using these T-nuts which come in from the opposite side and they go in kind of like that. So there's the ones on the Enerdrive board that they've used. Uh, I'm gonna use the same, same thing coming through the floor. So I've already put the first one in and then like so, the battery, and then bolts go through there and the battery sits in the tray. And don't forget to put the strap under the tray before you bolt it in. <laughs> it's gonna come out again anyway um, to cut those bolts off, they're a little bit long, but yeah, I just wanna get it in position so I can get the fridge and everything in and start figuring out exactly where everything's gonna sit. Bit of an update with the drawer system, got the drawer made last night, so Draw box there, decided to put it on slides. So we've got locking slides to put it on like that. And then the battery tray that we put in yesterday in there and then the fridge is gonna sit in here. So the next job is to build a smaller drawer that's gonna sit just on top of the, uh, just on top of the fridge there. So that's the next job. I'm gonna rip up some timber for that and get another box built. If you don't have a table saw or a track saw, you can actually make your own track saw. Jump on YouTube and search for how to make a track saw. You can make your own like this one that we've made here. Even though we had the table saw, the track saw just made it a bit easier to break down the larger sheets and get nice straight and square cuts.
time for a bit of an update. To be honest, I don't even know where I left you guys with progress. It's been a bit of a chaotic few days uh, trying to get everything sorted, waiting for deliveries, gear turning up, and getting the draw system finished as well as all the other stuff we've got going on on the interior of the cruiser. But it's been exciting as well as, yeah, pretty hectic. So a bit of an update here. Draw system, I've glued that up. I gave that a quick sand and glued it all up yesterday. So I'll give you a run through that in a minute and show you how that's all coming together. And hopefully it'll make a lot more sense now what our design is with that. Uh, I've built a little timber chopping board, I suppose, for the table. One of the reasons we chose this table is so we could do this timber uh, top instead of just having the black top and the color looks unreal. That's just a, I don't know, it's just a, I think a finger jointed panel from from Bunnings, like a, I think it's acacia is the timber, but I sanded it up, thickened it down, uh, and got, got edged it all, and yeah, it looks bloody neat. Really, really happy with it. Something else that turned up, which is really exciting, is our Mission 4x4 win Gold Wing window replacement. So these we fitted up uh, day before yesterday, I think it was. From day one, when we decided to get the 76 wagon, we knew we wanted Gold Wing windows. It was one of the things that we knew was gonna just really help with access to the storage in the back and just allow us to build a really flexible but really functional uh, rear setup. So. Yeah, gold wings was always on the list, but I couldn't find any that I really loved. Um, some of them don't follow. There's, there's a heap on the market, like Front Runner and Cruiser Company, and a few different ones. Um, a lot, some of them, like the Front Runner one, doesn't follow the body line of the Cruiser around the back. Um, they just leave that C pillar exposed, which I wasn't really a fan of. And a lot, in fact, I think all of them, apart from these ones, uh, you have to drill into the body to fit them, which again I wasn't too keen on. Um, I like the idea of these ones that I could take these off and put the factory window back in and there'd be no change to the vehicle. You wouldn't even know these had been there. So I really like that. They're exceptionally well made. Uh, this isn't sponsored, I, I bought these, but um, yeah, really, really happy with how well made they are, how well they fit to the body lines. Uh, I, I just think he's done an outstanding job. Sean from over there at Mission 4x4 in WA, massive shout out, mate. You've knocked it out of the park. And just this access, you'll see as we start to uh, fit the rest of the draw system and everything in, how this is gonna function, but just this access is gonna change the game. And to be honest, I mean, as much as we probably won't use the molly that's on the outside, I love the look of it, and it just sets the vehicle off. Um, yeah, once we get the roof rack and everything on, which we're still waiting on to turn up, uh, once we get the roof rack on and everything, I think it's just gonna look Unreal, can't wait, really excited in case you can't tell. In here, in the passenger area, we've also fitted up the Legend X Rogue Molly center console. So one of, this is one of the first products I saw from Legend X with their Molly range that I really wanted for the Cruiser uh, was, was this roof console. I just love how, how much lighter and sort of sleeker it is than some of the other sort of more traditional roof consoles you can get out there. And again, just that flexibility. We can set it up exactly how we want it. Uh, there's room there to put switches in. We can put switches in through here. Um, yeah, it, and mount whatever we want along the underside as well as obviously having that tray at the top to be able to put in whatever we want to be able to store in there. We've also gone ahead and mounted up this, which is um, an iPad holder or tablet mount for the kids to be able to watch shows in the back. And on the other side, I'll run around the other side and show you, I've put a, a uh, charge port in there. So that's from ScanStrut and so is the charge port. And so is this one I've got on the windscreen for my phone as I'm driving, uh, is this uh, ScanStrut suction mount, this one is, for the, uh, for the phone that, that sticks on the windscreen, which is pretty cool. So I first came across ScanStrap when I was looking for some cable glands to put cabling through the roof when we put our solar panel on the roof. I wanted a watertight, like a really neat watertight fitting and I found and bought some of their, um, yeah, their cable glands that go through the roof. But I, then while I was on their site, also found these, which are these, um, yeah, their mounting system. The cool thing about these is they're universal. So this one I can unclick off there and it'll mount bit hard with one end. It, it'll mount up there if I wanted to, so I could switch them over. I could run the tablet on the suction cup. I could run the phone up on that mount. A really good universal way to, to store your devices and mount your devices. Now, we may eventually want to run some mapping or something like that off the tablet, and we could then run it up the front and let the kids watch a show on our phones or something like that, or run a second tablet, hold it up the back, whatever you want. But they also do this really neat range of uh, charge ports. The one I put up here is a it's a USB A USB C charger that one. And so I pre-wired when we had the roof out to do the sound deadening. I pre-wired and ran cabling through the roof, um, so I was able to bring 
a good 12 volt supply in there to give charge to that. All that scan strut stuff I got through uh, Break Free RV, it's called, it's a web Australian website. Um, so the scan strut stuff I think is European or something like that, but uh, Break Free RV is the Australian distributor. So I'll drop a link in the description below if you're keen to go and check that out, but I'm stoked with it. I've got a couple more outlets I'm gonna put in the back as well uh, as part of our power system in the back end. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll see you. We might end up with a bit more of it, but for now, uh, really happy with how it's uh, coming together. It's really, really secure as well. Like it it's, holds the phone perfectly, quick and easy to get it in and out. I've mucked around with a lot of phone holders and they're, a lot of them are just more trouble than they're worth. Having that charging port up there in the roof console next to the kid's tablet is gonna be awesome. <laughs> it's gonna make long drives like the one we're prepping for at the moment to get over to WA uh, a lot more bearable for us in particular. <laughs> now, that's, we did put a post up on our Instagram the other day with a photo of it and a little video of the kids getting all excited about it. Uh, and something someone did point out is how you're gonna go with the noise, having the tablet right next to your head. Uh, We'll see. <laughs> Don't know yet, we haven't really used it, but something I didn't think of, we might have to look at some sort of headphone solution as well. But yeah, all in all, if you can't tell, I'm bloody excited about how it's all finally come together. Uh, it's been a bit of a logistical headache just with deliveries and trying to get all the gear to turn up where we needed it, when we needed it, uh, but we're getting there. Not too many things still to go. There's really just the, uh, yeah, just the roof rack that we're waiting on at the moment. Now, this drawer system, let's take a bit of a look at this. Now you can sort of get an idea. I've still got to put a cover strip either side of the fridge just to finish that off. So the big drawer on the right, we're gonna have all tools and spare parts and things like that in there. Then we've got this smaller drawer on top, which is gonna to be like, I think we're gonna use this as like our, don't mind the rag in there. I think we're gonna use this top drawer as like our, um, our kitchen sort of stuff. And then we've got the, the, of course, the Dometic fridge underneath, which works really, really well there. And now because I was able to put the compressor out the side, so I cut a hole in the side for the compressor to mount for the fridge, there's a, there's a space here at the back, which is where that 200 amp uh, Enerdrive battery uh, will live in here. And then the back of the drawer system is our Enerdrive power system. So we've got the 2000 watt inverter, which is why we needed that big 200 amp battery to be able to run the 2000 watt inverter, because we want to be able to cook with induction and things like that, DC, DC charger, and then all our power distribution over there. Righty-o, well, what a massive job that was. Even though it only looked like a few minutes on YouTube, I can guarantee you there's a few solid days of work in getting this built. Even though it's a relatively straightforward box, um, somehow there's just a lot of work in just the planning and everything, getting it all to work together. Really happy with how it's worked out. I've got those fill-in panels either side of the fridge, so that works really well now. Uh, and that smaller drawer on top, that gives us um, storage for those smaller items. And, and then obviously the bigger draw here. I've temporarily fixed in these molly panels just to show you guys how the sort of co overall concept is gonna be finished off once we're done. Um, and then obviously these front runner boxes as well. We've bought four of them for now, just to see how we go. We can actually fit six. They're part of the flexibility of the system. We can take them out and have them in the caravan, leave them in the car, depending on what trip we're doing. We can use them for just general camping gear and clothing and all that sort of thing. Uh, generally, they'll probably be empty most of the time when we're not uh, on a going on a trip away from the caravan, but just uh, gives us that additional flexible storage. Obviously the Molly everywhere allows us to, yeah, design the system as we go. We're gonna come up with uh, what suits us as we go along. Uh, in each side, there is gonna be infills here as well. So there's gonna be a shelf across the top to cover up the compressor and a panel here. And that can be that area can be accessed either from that gold wing off the side or from the back here. Uh, there is a switch panel to go in there as well for that uh, electrical system. Over on the driver's side here, gonna keep that more for sort of recovery gear, probably gonna have my airing up gear, like my air hose and gauge and things like that in there as well, um, as well as just some other general storage. But being able to mount stuff on the Molly, as well as having it sitting down the bottom, and this one will have a shelf here as well. Probably gonna have a 240 volt power point in here so that we can cook on our induction on the table there as well. So. Overall, pretty happy with how it's all come out. 99% of it worked out exactly as I wanted it to and how I thought it was gonna all work out. Um, I had to make a few tweaks along the way as you're always gonna have to. It's no accident that those front runner boxes fit in there. We designed the system to fit those. We looked around, we considered like the Expedition 134 boxes, the new tread boxes, the front runner ones, obviously, um, and a heap of others that are on the market and just trying to find the ones that were gonna work best with the space that we had available. And these ones just worked out uh, almost perfectly. We really didn't have to tweak too much to make them work, which was really, really good. The interior fit out for the vehicle really needed to be 
to be flexible, number one. It needed to be really practical, needed to be really functional. We also really wanted to look good and also just look a bit different to everything else that's out there. So we really tried to think outside the box a little bit and try and just come up with something that was gonna suit our needs, but also uh, set the vehicle apart and set it apart from a lot of the other uh, options out there. So we set about building our own draw system for that reason. Uh, there's some really good commercially available options out there. Uh, they are expensive, but then now that I've built my own, I've got to say, I can see why. There's quite a lot of work involved, even though it's a relatively simple box in essence. Uh, yeah, there's quite a lot in, involved in it, and uh, I can certainly see why a lot of those commercially available options are as expensive as they are. We travel full time, so the car needs to do a number of roles, and we don't have the option to be able to take gear out of it and leave it at home in the garage when we don't need it. We're carrying this gear with us all the time, uh, whether we like it or not, and whether we're using it or not. Uh, I mentioned in that video, I did want to do uh, black out these, this panel here. I've done that. I've uh, set The guys at 76 Fab, so the guys that do those fire extinguisher brackets that I used in that, um, that uh, Toe Pro bracket and UHF bracket, do a panel for here, but he also does panels to replace these ones in here, which I'm really looking forward to getting those fitted. So I bought, I've ordered those, they, they should turn up in the next couple of days, just to help make it a bit more durable in the back, get rid of this vinyl, make it more durable. But to be honest, a lot of it's just for the look as well. I just really want that blacked out look right through the back end. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think of it. What do you, what do you think of the look? Uh, it looks a bit different. Uh, downsides to the ply, I can see over carpet, Oh, well, the advantages is, I think, quick, easy to clean and easy to maintain. Downsides I'm thinking might be noise, um, just things rattling around and things will slide around on this a bit easier. So we will have to tie a lot more things down or we will have to secure things. Um, yeah, but again, having that molly panel either side is gonna make that super easy. So yeah, look, we, we love it. We're really glad that we went something different and, and a bit of a unique look. Now, if you missed last week's video, don't forget we are giving away that Blue Eddy AC70 as well. The winner for that will be drawn on December 9. Details of how you can enter that are in last week's video, which was our thousand days of full-time travel. Go and check that one out if you haven't seen it already. Now, out of those criteria that we had for the vehicle, you might notice something's missing in that we don't have a sleep system for the four of us installed yet. Uh, we are still going to do that. It just hasn't been done yet. But there is a plan to be able to make this vehicle support the four of us, us and the two kids, with two of us sleeping in the vehicle and two of us on top in a rooftop tent. This draw system has been designed to make into a bed base for two people to sleep inside the vehicle as well, which is going to be really, really fun. Looking forward to doing that. That will be in a later stage. Once the bank account recovers uh, and we get a little bit more time to do that, uh, we're looking forward to fitting the vehicle out to be able to support the four of us uh, for doing some yeah fun little trips away for a couple of nights at a time. But for now, look, we've already owned two double swags that we took around with us on our first year of travel and they're coming with us again. So for now, we're just gonna go back to basics. We are gonna be putting an awning on the roof rack so we'll be able to camp up under those uh, and we're just gonna keep it really simple. All right, guys, we're gonna get ourselves over to WA. Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think of this system. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Over 50% of you that watch our videos aren't subscribed to our channel. It's fast and it's free for you and it really does help us out. Thanks so much, Legends. We'll see you guys next Sunday. Well, I've done it. Audio synced and action. It's, yeah, I don't know about all that, eh? It's too much information. Yeah, good. I just think just really short. Now do a really short version of that.